Hey everyone, Steve here. In this video, we're going to look at some cool things you can do with partitions and how to refresh either specific tables in Power BI or specific partitions of specific tables. We'll be doing this using Fabric and we're going to be looking at it using a data pipeline. And then we're also going to be looking at a notebook and how to write some custom code. There's a lot of documentation down below. And so you'll probably want to read through that. If you're unfamiliar with partitions and incremental refresh or want a refresher, this is actually part two. So again, down below, there's a link to part one, which we just cover partitions, be a bit of a refresh on what they are and how to set them up using something like Tablet Editor. With that, let's get over and have a look on how to refresh partitions with Fabric. So here I am in Fabric with my semantic model. This semantic model is the same one we looked at in the last video, where I set up the incremental refresh and all of those partitions. If you haven't watched that or you need a reminder, we can head over to tabular editor here and we can have a look at this model. We can see it's got a few tables. If I click on the calendar and open this up in partitions, If I click on the customer and open this up and I look at partitions, there's just a single partition in this table. However, on the sales table, if I click on the sales table, we can see right here that there is a incremental refresh policy set up of 10 years rolling the last 35 days incremental. If I open the sales and look at the partitions, you'll see here Power BI has gone ahead and automatically created all of these partitions for me. Now, heading back, there's a few things we can do to refresh these partitions by using Fabric. The first one is if I go to this pipeline, I have a simple activity here, and it's just an activity, and it's a refresh semantic model activity. Clicking on it, though, you can see that I've connected up to my sales to model. There's a few cool things we can actually do. I've opened the advanced here, and you can see there's a few um, extra options. Look at the documentation and the links if you want to understand these in detail. But before we get onto that, you'll see here we have this tables section. If I open the tables, you can see it actually lets me select specific tables. This is really useful if maybe I wanted to refresh my dimensions and my facts because I could have one activity which refreshed my dimensions and another out re refresh my facts, maybe have some uneven uh, data coming in, or maybe I want to refresh them at different intervals. I could set my dims to refresh uh, once a month, once a week, my facts may be less or more, however I want it. I'm going to select the sales table and the customer table here. Now if I collect select partitions, if I look at my customer table, you'll see there's no partitions for this table, which makes sense because I haven't partitioned this. Um, there's no incremental refresh set up. If I click the sales table, however, you'll see here are all of my partitions. Now these are set up by Power BI um, and these will change right each day because each day will add the new partitions and remove and, and every month it will, it will squash some partitions together. So this is all being handled by the incremental refresh. You can see here, if I did want to uh, select specific ones, I can. I can also, underneath said, add dynamic content. And here, we're not going to go into the code in, in this video, but you could get some very complex logic where you could figure out the latest partitions if you wanted. You can also set up custom partitions as well. So you can set up partitions however you want, and you can do this in something like Tabular Editor. So if you have set partitions, maybe yearly partitions that you set up, you can do that, and then you can just refresh specific ones. It doesn't just have to be by date. So you could do a partition by you know day and by a specific product. That way I can refresh all the partitions in this product and so on. So you can get really complex with this. You'll see on the advanced, um, if you hover over, as again, we're not going to go into this because I've got the documentation too much. But one thing I do like is the max parallelism. And this just basically says, 
Uh, and you're looking at these partitions, these tables. How many things can you do in parallel? How many operations can you do in parallel? Usually, I wouldn't uh, advise changing this unless you have, you know, some really slow processes or something. You know, running right, you can test around on this. So there is is one of the easiest ways. Very very simple, and we can see here you can click just the tables. You can select specific partitions. You can split up your model in different ways and refresh on different frequencies. To get even more complex, I'm going to head over to my notebook here. In my notebook, I will see, and this is available if you look in the description down below, you can download this notebook. Now, it's not intended to be particularly useful, rather it's intended for this demo, and it's a good idea for you to get started and just to have a play and maybe understand it a bit better. One thing I have done is I've added a uh, whole lake house here. And this lake house is for logging. So I'm going to do some more custom stuff. When I refresh, I can do custom logging ops. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to install um, some dependencies. And the biggest one I'm going to use is this Senpai Fabric. Again, the link is down below. This is an absolutely amazing uh, library here. And it's got loads of cool stuff you can do. One of them is interact with Tom. And Tom is just the nickname for the model, and that's what Tablet Editor does. So we can do a lot of cool stuff that kind of you can do in Tablet Editor. Here, I have a few uh, variables here. What I've got is I've got the run ID. And actually, what I'm doing with the run ID is just taking the, the date and time. This is just so that in my logging table, I can uh, have an ID as the date and time, and I know which run this is because it's got the date and time. I've got the data set, which is sales two, and then my workspace, which is the refresh test. Now, this is really useful because you can actually use the, the text and the names and you don't have to go and get all those GUIDs like you normally have to do. I've got some incremental tables and I'll show you what I'm doing with that later. And then you can also just like in uh, Data Factory, in pipelines, you can set the match parallelism. You can also set the refresh type. Now, again, the documentation is down below to understand this, but I'm going to do a data only. This is just refreshing the data. So it won't recalculate stuff um, and it won't do defrags, which is sort of building uh, metadata in the background. You can do full, which I normally would recommend, or you can just do the, the calculate and the defrag again, read the documentation to fully understand this. Now, I've got a couple of functions here. This is what it looks like for a custom refresh. What I have is the, um, this is just a custom function to refresh data set. And what it is, is it's just taking the workspace name, the data set, and the tables to refresh. It asks you if you want to apply the refresh policy. So at the moment I'm not, because I'm just doing a, a full refresh. And then it actually tells me the refresh type. And this is where I've set in is it data, is it full, calculate, whatever. And then I can even set the parallelism. Again, just like Data Factory, this is really just um, same thing. And we're just refreshing whole tables. And we're going to say, let's uh, put in some tables to refresh. So I can put in tables to refresh. I can give it the table that I want to refresh. Very similar to what we just saw. And also do a sort of incremental refresh, I've called this, or maybe this should be better called a partition refresh. So where I have objects, unlike this full, where I said just give the tables, I can actually give this a list. So I can give the table and partition. So this is for refreshing a sp specific partition in this. Now I've just hard coded max parallelism to one here because I'm the idea is I'm going partition by partition in this. And then, I, then I've just put a little print statement just to say that it's running. I'm just going to run these so that I create the two uh, functions here. Now, what I'm going to do, and this is important. Again, I'm not going to go through the code in detail. You can download this if you want. But I'm going to say with Fabric, which is what I have imported earlier as uh, Senpai.Fabric, I imported as Fabric, so I'm using that Senpai.Fabric. I said, with Fabric, we want to connect semantic model. That's great. And this just says as Tom. So I'm just connecting this as Tom. And I'm just connecting to my um, 
semantic model here with the data set and the workspace. I put read only as false because I want to be doing updates to it, right? In this module, you can also do things like create DAX, you can change a lot of stuff. So only put read only as false. If you know you're going to be changing stuff, I'm going to be refreshing and doing stuff to it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call something called all partitions and I'm going to call it all partitions. And in it, I'm going to list Tom, which is this model. And I'm just going to call it all partitions. Then you can see, I'm going to print some stuff. So what it's going to do is, and this is just a show, just for an example, I'm going to print the, for each partition, it's going to print the table name, the name, which is the partition name, when it was last free, refreshed and its state. You can see here, it's actually gone through and I can see each partition. So this is sales. This is 2018 partition. It was refreshed on December 17th at 6.30 PM. And the state is ready, which means it's ready to refresh. It's not currently being refreshed. You see here on purpose, um, these later partitions, I have not refreshed here. So you can actually see this is in a bit of a weird state where some of these partitions are updated and some are not. And this could happen in incremental refresh when you do anything custom like this. And then you have the, the other tables. These are just the default partitions, which is the whole table. You see here, we have a few things out of that partition. There's a lot more information you can get from these partitions. Again, read the documentation uh, down below, but this is really useful uh, to see. You can actually see, you know, state of the partitions, and this is just a few things you can see. So what I'm going to do here is I've just set a logging data frame. And what I'm doing in this is this is just a, um, logging. So I can just log what's happened in my partitions. If the refresh was successful, then I have my, uh, iterative refresh. So what I'm doing here is I'm just saying in P for all partitions. So just loop through every partition and um, within the model. And that is all of these partitions here. So it's going to loop through each of these. Then I'm saying if the mode is import, right? And so P dot mode is another function you can get. And I'm saying if the table name is in my incremental tables. So what I have here is I've set at the top. Um, my incremental tables to be sales. So I'm saying only refresh these tables. And this is just going to be a list of tables that I want to, to refresh in this incremental way. So it's going to say, if the table name is in this list, refresh that one and if it's in an import mode. So that's going to skip over, for example, the product and the customer and the store here. Next thing I do is I get a request ID. So it just sends that incremental refresh, which is my function I wrote earlier. So it's going to loop through each of the uh, tables, each of the partitions in the model is saying, is it in poor mode? And is it in the list that I want to refresh? Then it's going to set off a refresh. <laughs> this gives me a specific ID. And what I then do is just a while loop where I say, wait five seconds and then get the status of the refresh. And this is another uh, built-in function that I can use. And this is from the, the fabric and I can just get refresh execution details, which is says get the status of, of this. Then I can look and I just read the status and say, if it's completed, that's great. I'm going to, uh, just log it. And this is just adding to the metadata to log. If it's failed, cancel disabled, also log it and just have a slightly different message. If my partition isn't in import mode, we also log it and just say that we've skipped it. And then at the end, we just simply save our logs. And so if I run this, it's going to run. And now you can see it started with the sales 2015 partition. Once that's refreshed in a few seconds, it's going to say completed. It's going to move on to the next partition. And here we have it starting the 2016th. And there we have it. That was a intro to some sort of custom refresh patterns. Now we wanted just to give you a quick overview of how to do this and some options. Hopefully this gives you some ideas, some ways to split up uh, your refreshes and maybe iterate through partitions for really large tables. 
And then you can even go ahead and set up your custom partitions and have your own crazy refresh schedules as you want. So thank you very much. Uh, please do like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Uh, we really appreciate it and we will see you on the next video.